Hey besties, right now we're in Vietnam and I want to say thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. As we're on the brink of a brand new year, let's chat about something important, the huge impact of therapy. It's not just about overcoming life challenges, it's about setting the stage for emotional growth. Thanks to therapy, I've learned to understand my emotions. Yes, I have those, a lot of them, sometimes too many. But I've also learned to understand the emotions of others, like friends, my significant other, and folks I work with. It improved my communication skills and actually brought me closer to the people who mean the world to me. Today's video sponsor, BetterHelp is here to be your partner on this incredible journey. Journey. BetterHelp has a league of licensed therapists ready to guide you towards self-discovery and stronger connections. They're on a mission to make therapy accessible and affordable for everyone. It's all online, so there's no need to worry about location constraints. Getting started is as simple as answering a few questions to create your profile. In most cases, within 48 hours or less. Then you can talk to that therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it be a phone call, video chat, or messaging. If deepening your self-awareness and connections with others is important to you, give therapy a shot. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash besteverfood to get 10% off your first month. Oh, and here's the best part. With BetterHelp, switching therapists is super easy and there are no hidden costs or insurance headaches. So what are you waiting for? Let's start the new year with a fresh perspective. Just go to betterhelp.com slash best ever food. Now onto the show. In this video, I'm returning to the Washington State Fair for the ultimate cheat day. Mm -hmm. I thought this was gonna be a stunt food, inedible, but no, this is the most expensive baked potato I've ever seen in my life. But let me back up. State fairs aren't about being healthy or balanced. Take a look at that hot Cheeto action. They're about pushing the limits of what's possible, sending your dopamine levels flying higher than your insulin, and making you crave for foods you didn't even know existed. For your Toasty Locos, how loco are they? Wow, my taste buds are just not trained up for this. Today, I'm on a mission to disregard the calories and cholesterol oh. in search of the most over-the-top delicious destinations I can find. This bite is probably worth a dollar. Let's go for it. And it all starts here. Behind me, our first location, Hattie Mae's Southern Delight. Last time I was here, oh my gosh. I sunk my teeth into wow. their crispy, biscuit-battered shrimp. I'm calling it now. This is the new shrimp and grits. Now, we're gearing up for a heart-stopping calorie bomb that will surely make my cardiologist demand a raise. Introducing mac and cheese with a bit of a southern twist. At this stall, America's favorite comfort food takes flight with the addition of crawfish. Down in the deep south, crawfish are the star of any good cookout. Oh, yes! Prepared and boiled in epic proportions, these guys pack a single bite of sweet, soft meat. Kind of like a tiny lobster. Now, these mud bugs have made their way up north, and they've joined this blend of noodles and creamy cheese. Do you have somebody in the back with a bunch of crayfish and a toothpick? We buy them already pre-made. With the amount of sales we go through, there's no way we could keep up by trying to boil the crawfish ourselves. You know what? It was a fake question. I assumed the audience would assume that. Sure. I knew the whole time. <laughs> All right, right here we have our mac and cheese, and the crawfish are already mixed inside. Hit it with some oiled cured peppers, and that is ready to go. My blood pressure might regret it later, but to spice things up, I'm taking our meal to the next level with Mitch's ultimate bestseller. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but alligator kebab is by far our most popular item. I get it. This is gooey duck territory, not alligator territory. So maybe people in Louisiana would be blown away by the gooey ducks. Show me you got some. How do you make the alligator kebab? We soak the gator tenderloin in buttermilk, some spices for seven days, stick it on a kebab with onions, and then we basically funnel cake batter. Then we deep fry it and serve it with like a sweet mustard. It's got a little bit of horseradish in there as well, and then top it with a little bit of blackening spice. I never knew that alligator was on my list for cheat days, but now it absolutely absolutely is. This looks awesome. I can't wait to try it out. Right here we have my first meal of the day and it is a heavy one. Come take a look at this. Now that we're in the light, you can see I love the color of the peppers on top. And then we got that mac and cheese looking oily, creamy, and rich. I was hoping they would have several strips of crawfish tails just laying on top, but no, they're all buried within. Cheers. Mm, super creamy. And then a bit of spice coming from those peppers on top. Mm, sour and hot. That's a nice contrast to the cheese because the sourness kind of cuts through the heaviness of this right here. Mm. I got a tail on that one. I gotta say, I like it. You know, crawfish can have a little bit different flavor. Almost be a little bit muddy sometimes. This ain't like that at all. Right here, the alligator. Come take a look at this. Now, I've had alligator before, but I've never had anything like this. And also, you know, putting the onions on there, it's almost like we have onion rings as well. This looks so good. Let's go for it. It's delicious, super juicy, succulent, quite salty, but that batter on there is really nice, really crispy, and it holds in the juices. It's like when you eat a mozzarella stick and the juices from the cheese just explode out. It's the alligator version of that. It's not quite chicken, but it's more juicy. It's not quite fish, it's not flaky. It's something in between. I'm gonna hit it in the sauce right here. The sauce is almost like a honey mustard. It's sweet, it's mustardy. Oh, there's a clump. Do you think that guy rode here on that little bike? Oh, look what he's got. 
Oh no. Come on over. I got some mac and cheese filled with crawfish. Crawfish? Well, that was crawfish then. Stop eating the most expensive part of my dish. You still got the vegetable. That's the good stuff. Ever wonder what makes hearts race or makes taste buds do the tango? It's the sizzling, crispy wonders that come straight from this golden oil. Welcome back to Totally Fried. I'm here with Mitch again. Last time we were here, I took a flavorful plunge into the world of deep fried pork belly. Wow, what a mix of emotion. But there's much more sizzle and pop here to find. Deep fried pickles, even deep fried Snickers. But what's stealing the spotlight as the most decadent would have to be their deep fried cheesecake. What is the secret behind a good fried cheesecake? I mean, you gotta make sure it's a balance between not too sweet, a little bit creamy, the right amount of cream cheese. Uh, we'll find out. The cheesecake alone is a clandestine affair between a velvety dream and a naughty slice of heaven. And the transformation that's about to be performed here is a one-way ticket to dessert nirvana. Right now we're in the kitchen and I'm about to see how this cheesecake is battered and fried. Submerge the entire thing, get a nice thick layer of horn dog batter, and let it slowly descend into that hot oil. Looks like this one's ready. It's perfectly golden brown. So our cheesecake is done being fried, but it is not done. First, some whipped cream. Then, hit it with some chocolate. Then, an avalanche of powdered sugar. And that is complete. I've seen fried cheesecake around the country and I just never had a nerve to try it out because I thought, eh, fried cheesecake, I already know what to expect. It's gonna be a wedge of cheesecake, they're gonna fry it. But no, here, it's something a bit unexpected. First of all, whipped cream from a can. If you guys ever saw my house tour, you'll know that I love whipped cream in a can. Mmm, it's very nice. Tastes just like whipped cream in a can. Where do we start? Okay, I'm gonna just go right down the middle, rip it open. Take a look at that. That is a load of cheesecake. That already would be a delicious, satisfying dessert on its own. I like the cheesecake is still cold on the inside and it's warm and crunchy on the outside. Let's try it out. Mm-hmm. First of all, man, that cheesecake is awesome. It's just like a sweet cream cheese. And when it comes to this batter, thicker is better. This is a heavy food, not just heavy like it has a lot of fat, like it weighs two pounds in my hands. And so you need a strong coating of batter that can handle all that weight, like me when I put on a Speedo. All right, this is my final bite. I've got some of the cheesecake inside, some of that batter, and then some whipped cream on top. Cheers, let's go for it. It's good quality cheesecake. This is wild. I honestly can't believe it. he's charging like 10 bucks. That's the same you would pay at a restaurant. And you know, state fairs are notorious for ripping people off. So it's a good price. It's a lot of food. Bring your extended family. You're gonna need help with this one. You wanna know the ultimate secret to taming your inner sweets craving monster? Simply become best friends with Mitch, the mad genius behind 25 food stalls at these here fairgrounds. Are you looking for staff? Because I worked at Applebee's. I did get fired. You can do it today, sure, but after that, we'll fire you. Okay. <laughs> Our next stop, the Big Cheese, is one of his absolute masterpieces. No cheat day would be complete without dessert or without cheese. That's what they're serving here behind me. They have cheese everything. Fried cheese curds, a giant fried mozzarella stick, jumbo cheddar stuffed tater tots. Then they have what I came here for, the cheddar cheese ice cream. Let's go inside and see him poop it out of a machine. Ah, the owner would love if I described it as pooping out the ice cream. If you think this is just your run-of-the-mill, ordinary cheese ice cream, well then, my foodie friends, you are in for a surprise. This goes beyond being a dessert. It's a wild fusion so gloriously unhealthy that your taste buds will throw a party while your nutritionist runs away screaming. So our recipe here begins with a streusel. A streusel that will soon be adorned with cheddar ice cream. Now crown the supreme dessert overlord with a dollop of golden soft serve cheddar cheese ice cream. We have our dessert right here. I love that you can come here and get a cheese appetizer, a cheese meal, and a cheese dessert. So we've got streusel and some melted ice cream on there too. Let's try it out. Magical, flaky, crunchy, melty, cinnamon, apple. It's delicious, but that's not why we came here. We came here for the ice cream that has almost melted already. I wish I could soft serve this right into my mouth. Huh, I wonder if this is how they made it. It tastes like generic white ice cream, but they added Kraft macaroni and cheese powder mix into it. That would give it the color, and that's the kind of flavor it has. It has that kind of like beautiful powder chemical cheese flavor to it. Mix the cheese ice cream with some strudel. Mm. I like it, it's very unique. I thought this was gonna be a stunt food, some kind of BS that's inedible, but no. Uh oh. Oh, dang it, that's gonna screw up the continuity. People are gonna know we shoot out of order. 
Perhaps no food is more comforting to Americans than that which comes from our neighbors to the south. And here at Raspados del Sur, Tino is delivering a sinful fiesta feast. This place was established in 1984, the same year I was established as a human being. La Are you the one who started this place? Because you don't seem uh, <laughs> old enough. <laughs> Tino is the second generation maestro behind this brand. My dad started this business. Originally, they were all about the cool vibes of shaved ice. Then their menu went loco with vibrant, brightly colored drinks like the mangonada or like the burrito locos. But even with these drinks, it would be a mistake to skip out on the food, especially their toasty locos. Loco is insanity for your toasty locos. How loco are they? They're pretty crazy. It's a big, big bunk for one person. Last time when I was in Mexico City, I had Dorito Locos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? So they started using different kind of chips and they started naming them after whatever chips, then Locos. <gasps> Boom, I am in the kitchen. I've got Mary right here behind me and she's gonna help me in making the Toasty Locos. And when I say help me, I mean she's gonna do everything. So we've got the Tostitos here, that goes inside. We got mango, cucumber, and jicama. Oh no, they're mixed. I hate cucumber, but just do it. Here we have pickled pork skin and some peanuts for a little bit of texture. Tamarind candy going next. Then we've got shambui, some Valentina sauce, tahini, and a little bit of salt, just in case we didn't have enough sodium. <gasps> Finally, a lime. Wow, Tino said this thing is a locos and he was not lying. This thing looks ridiculous. Let's go outside and try it out. The smell is wild. It smells spicy and like crazy sour. Let's try out the tamarind candy. Wow, sweet, salty, semi-unbearable. That's a lot of flavor in there, my friend. This is pork skin that's been put in vinegar. That's a cool texture. It's kind of like eating calamari. I think it would be a miracle for me to get down there and find a chip. There we go. I got some Tostitos, a nut. Is that a cucumber? It is. Some pickup on there, some pork, a little bit of that crazy sweet and salty tamarind food. The chips give it a generous crunch, as do the peanuts, but I gotta say, guys, this is very sour and very salty. I'm going to salt shock if I ate all this. The best part is you put extra salt. I think the problem is me, my taste buds are just not trained up for this. I gotta say, it's not called the Good Mental Health Tostitos. It's called Tosti Loco. It means insane. It means to be crazy. And this right here fits the bill. The only thing I'm missing is a giant frothy beer. No cheat day can be complete without a supreme protein that hits a bit different. Look no further than Piggly's Seafood, a stall that's been rocking fairgoers for 50 years. Just a moment ago, I saw a gentleman with a big industrial-sized bag of lobster. He put it on the flat top and he was smothering it with butter. That is the prime ingredient. Then, after the lobster is ready, it goes into a myriad of different dishes. They've got lobster tacos, they've got lobster french fries, they have lobster rolls, and they have what I'm here for today, the lobster baked potato. Imagine living in a fever dream you never want to end. That's the magic of lobster stuffed potatoes. It all starts with the sizzling sounds of hundreds of lobster tails hitting the flat top with garlic and butter, creating a haunting symphony that will speak to your soul. This is where the potato journey begins, right here in this oven, where they're getting nice, steamy, and soft. Wow, mucho grande. So first he cuts it, spreads it open, and that right there is already a lot of food. He hits it with salt, then Alfredo sauce going on next. From here, lobster, a lot of it, oh my gosh. Hit it with a special mayo sauce. Next, some purple onion, scallions, then some Parmesan cheese, and right here is our final product. This is a baked potato for the 1%. This is for the people who fly in private jets and tell you not to drive a car. <laughs> They're eating this kind of baked potato. I'm gonna try grabbing just a piece of the edge here. Oh, there we go. I've got onions, sauce, mayo, lobster. This bite is probably worth a dollar. Let's go for it. Alfredo works really well. Now, the most difficult thing about eating a baked potato is that it can get kind of dry sometimes, and we have plenty of throat lubrication with this Alfredo sauce. Next, lobster bite. Oh my gosh, that is not just one lobster. That's a lobster and a lot of his friends. Mm, that's good. That is satisfying, it's juicy, it's buttery. I think they really nailed the base of this dish, the foundation. If they didn't have a good potato, this thing wouldn't work at all. It's chewy on the outside, it's soft in the inside. I mean, look at this. It just becomes like instant mashed potato as you move around the starchy part. Oh, we've got the perfect bite right here. Alfredo, some potato starch, lots of lobster. Let's try it out. I know sometimes life can be tough. Yeah, 
I was teleported. This, for a cheat day, is very satisfying. It's creamy, it's carby, it's got seafood. But our next location has even other stuff. I'm not sure what it has, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> It kind of looks like a car, mostly it looks like a guy bent over. Before my cheat day euphoria tips the scale into full-on regret and self-loathing, I'll end this day on a high in the hands of Mary, the culinary magician behind my wildest cravings. Last time, we indulged in her fiery Nashville hot chicken mm. and her fruity pebble cheese dog. Mm -hmm. Now, at her pizza by the slice booth, it's a carnival of flavors. Mexican corn pizza, pickle pizza, and the one I'm after. The hot Cheeto pizza. Hot Cheeto pizza, the fiery daredevil of the pizza universe. Picture this, a crispy golden crust blanketed in a fiery storm of crushed hot Cheetos. How'd you come up with that idea? Well, me loving hot Cheetos and me loving pizza, I thought, how can I combine the two? So I take the Cheetos and grind them to a dust so they're nice and fresh, so it still has that nice, unique flavor of the hot Cheeto. And then we brush the cheese pizza with a little garlic butter and then we top it with a hot Cheeto and there you go. All right, folks, you know the rules. It's a one bite taste test. Let's go for it. We got the Route 66 pizza right here. Take a look at that hot Cheeto action. So essentially it's a cheese pizza, but then they just crusted it with that Cheeto dust. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna grab one right now. I love that they have these giant pizza and they just do six slices. So anybody who comes here and gets pizza by the slice, they get a huge piece of pie. This is hard to do with one hand. I was poor I do this. Mmm, that's wild. Starting from the bottom, excellent dough, pillowy and soft like my abs. On top of that, a nice savory tomato sauce, a pile of cheese, and then just so much of that hot Cheeto dust. You can actually feel it crunching still. The topping was already added like five minutes ago. It's still crunchy, but it's spicy too. It is hot. Oh my God, it's so much seasoning. It's salty as heck. I'm gonna take one more bite, fold it in half. You gotta taco it. That is a pizza sensation. Now, could I take down a whole pizza of this? No, it'd be way too much. I mean, there must be a bag and a half of Cheetos on here. But for one slice, it is such a fun new experience. It's crunchy, it's cheesy, it's doughy, all together in one pizza pie. Beyond this, she has the pickle pizza, she has the Mexican corn pizza. I'm very curious to see what she does in the future with her new pizza creations. But this, this was awesome. Plus, one slice, 10 bucks. That ain't that bad. Boom, and that is the end of our ultimate cheat day here at the Washington State Fair. What's next? Salad, vegetables, regret, bloating, diarrhea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if I had to pick a favorite from this cheat day, a food that I would love to try again, it would be a tie between the lobster, baked potato, and the alligator kebabs. The alligator kebabs really brought it. They were greasy, juicy, crispy, and then they had a great sauce to go with them. But really, I enjoyed everything and trying all these people's unique, imaginative innovations. If you love Indian food, then you're going to love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country. What's I'm your name? smarter than I look. Lanky, nice to oh, meet you. Oh, Lanky. Me. I'm greasy. Look at yeah. <laughs> Some boys, you never know where their hands have been. This is mac and cheese filled with crawfish. Crawfish? You don't know like crawfish? I don't know. Hold on. Uh, you just got to get it clean because that's how mama does it. Mama does yeah, Mama does it just like that. She will here, you got something on your face, and she goes to clean it. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, Mama slobber, clown slobber, all good. Okay, well, I don't really need any more <laughs> demonstrations, but do you want to give it a try? Now, for folks who haven't had alligator, it's really similar to frog. No? Oh, okay. Check out this marketing. What's cool is you can rip off the top, and then you can walk around and be a mascot for this place for free dollars. Who am I though? I'm the hairy yellow guy. I think he's a regional mascot. Maybe like the Paul Bunyan of Washington? I'm not sure. Normal. I don't, was that a transformer? I don't understand. I can't bring my katana to the fair, but you can literally just be a car. How is that fair? Guys, this has been six different days at the fair. Two videos in New York, two videos in Minnesota, and now ending the second video here in Washington. I hope you enjoyed this fun state fair series across the country. Let me know downstairs in the comments, should we do it again? Should we hit up other state fairs throughout the country? If not, I still might do it anyways, because it's a lot of fun for me and super easy. All the food is like really near each other. Anyways, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh, peace. Let's go find a toilet. Oh.
All right.